In 1892, Heinrich Wiegand became the leader of the Norddeutscher Lloyd Line, and he began reforming the company, which would result in its rapid expansion. Long-term goals he had set for the company was to expand their profit so they could continue increasing the size and operational speed of the ships under their operational register. In 1896, he formed a committee of representatives who would inspect a variety of Germany's leading shipyards, where they would offer these shipyards to design a ship freely, with a set of stipulations to go along with them, namely the ship needed to be capable of crossing the Atlantic in under six days, which meant a maximum speed of 22.5 knots for roughly six hours, and a standard cruising speed of at least 21 knots. Another condition the shipyards were given was that in the event that following trials a ship did not reach the conditions set by NDL, NDL did not have to accept it for service. This also meant that NDL did not have to pay for the construction of the vessel. Two companies ended up responding and being accepted into the program that NDL had set out. The first one was AG Vulcan, which was by far the most advanced shipyard in Germany, and its naval designer was Robert Zimmerman, whom was by far one of the greatest ship designers of his time period. The order placed with Falcon was for a ship of roughly 15,000 tons standard displacement and a maximum speed of 22 knots. This was by far the largest ship ordered by any German company at the time. The second yard that was accepted was an unusual one, as it was Ferdinand Sikau of Danzig. What made Sikau unusual was the fact it was a risky offer, as Sikau at that point had only constructed a ship up to 6,500 tons standard displacement, and they had only just received an order for a ship of 10,000 tons. Most of the ships produced by Sikau at that point were underneath 4,000 tons, and the bulk of them were torpedo boats and destroyers for the German Navy. Sikau, like NDL itself, wanted to expand its influence in the shipping market. In order to do this, they needed to be accepted for larger and more prominent ships, and this project was perfect. NDL sent a few basic requirements to Sikau, namely, they wanted a ship of roughly 13,000 tons standard displacement and a maximum speed of 22.5 knots. Though this vessel was slightly smaller than the one ordered from Vulcan, they were intended to be running mates on the same route. Sikau's naval architects would create a series of preliminary designs, which they would refine and narrow down to a final draft, which was submitted to NDL's chief engineer, Max Walter. Walter and Wiegand would overlook the plans, and Walter had a series of concerns regarding the design, but regardless of these issues, Wiegand decided to place the order with Sikau for the final draft. By this point, work was already underway at Vulcan with what would become Kaiser Wilhelm der Grosse. The keel laying date for this ship has been lost to history, but it was launched on the 5th of October, 1897, christened Kaiser Friedrich. The ship would have a rather brief fitting out period, and it was completed in early May of 1898. The passenger accommodations for Kaiser Friedrich would largely mirror that of Kaiser Wilhelm der Grosse, but the ship's overall technical designs and the propulsion designs were different. The overall length of the vessel was 183 meters, with a maximum beam of 19.5 meters, and a registered tonnage of 12,480. Its displacement was 20,000 tons. The propulsion system was made up of two five-cylinder quadruple expansion reciprocating engines fed by steam from 10 boilers in three boiler rooms. This gave it a calculated 28,000 shaft horsepower. The ship also had a maximum capacity of 1,350 passengers, along with 420 crew. The appearance and characteristics of Kaiser Friedrich were perfect, just what NDL was looking for. However, this was soon to be shattered. On the 12th of May, 1898, Kaiser Friedrich underwent its first high-speed trials, with several representatives from Sikau and NDL on board. I will point out now that for the trials, the ship was not at its maximum displacement, it did not have its passengers, their cargo, food and water, loaded ballast, or full coal compartments. Even under these light conditions, Kaiser Friedrich could barely make it to 20 knots, and it had no chance of surpassing that. 
Upon arriving at Bremerhaven, NDL, which was largely disappointed, outright refused to accept the ship for service. Sikau took the ship back to dry dock, where they would shave 30 centimeters off each of the three blades from both propellers. On the 1st of June, the ship sailed back to Bremerhaven, where it was scheduled to depart for Southampton on the 7th. On the 8th of June, the ship left Southampton en route to New York on its maiden voyage under the operation of NDL. The maiden voyage was as terrible as NDL could have expected it to have gone. The ship ran into rough weather, which meant it had to run at lower operational speeds than it should have, and for a period of 20 hours during the voyage, the port engine ceased operation, and for a period of 11 hours, the starboard engine also ceased operation, though the two engines were not out of operation simultaneously, so it always had power during its voyage. The ship that was contracted to make the crossing in under six days took seven days, ten hours, and fifteen minutes to complete it. The ship maintained an average speed of 17.7 knots. On the 25th of June, Kaiser Friedrich would return to Europe without passengers, and the voyage lasted nine days, two hours, and thirty minutes, with an average speed of 15 knots due to a series of new mechanical problems. As a result of this terrible performance, the next two scheduled voyages were cancelled, and the ship was sent back to Sikau. It was found that the slide valves would jam, and the studs on the air pump brackets would disconnect and break, which would result in the engines overheating, which caused them to cease operation. Sikau would rectify these issues and make other minor adjustments in an attempt to increase the ship's overall operational speed. The ship was returned to NDL on the 4th of September, and it would embark on its second voyage on the 14th of September from Southampton to New York once again. This voyage was a bit more satisfactory. The vessel took 6 days and 12 hours to complete its voyage, with an average speed of 19.5 knots. For the next three trips, which were booked up to December of 1998, the ship would not improve its performance, which meant it was still not up to contract standards. In December, it was sent back to Sakal for an overhaul, which would last three months. During this refit, the ship would receive new air pumps for its boilers, and the three funnels were extended by 4.5 meters to optimize boiler draft. On the 5th of March, 1899, the ship set off on its sixth crossing from Southampton to New York, which took 7 days and 40 minutes. The ship's propellers tossed two of their blades during the voyage, and as a result, NDL lost hope in the ship. For the final time, NDL would give Sikau a chance, and it was sent back to the shipyard where it would receive more alterations to its propulsion system, and it would carry out eight more voyages for NDL, the shortest of which was two hours shy of seven days. On the 27th of June, 1899, NDL was done waiting for Sakao to correct Kaiser Friedrich's issues, and they officially sent it back to the shipyard for the final time. They refused to accept the ship for any further service. At the same time, they placed an order with AG Vulcan for a larger, improved variation of Kaiser Wilhelm der Grosse, which would eventually become the Kronprinz Wilhelm. Once Kronprinz Wilhelm had proved a success like Kaiser Wilhelm der Grosse at the end of 1901, and early 1902, NDL ended up suing Sikau for the Kaiser Friedrich in order to get rid of the one-third ownership they had of the ship and to get rid of any financial risk regarding Kaiser Friedrich. NDL argued that since the ship did not fulfill the initial contract requirements, namely the speed department, they would accept no responsibility for the ship there on out. Sikau's defense was that the coal NDL was using was of low quality, and that is why the ship could not make 22 knots. It had nothing to do with the ship's design and construction. The case was a long, drawn-out process, but in 1908, the judge sided with NDL, and Sikau was at full fault for the ship's failures. But what happened to the ship from the time NDL stopped using it to the time that the court case was settled? Well... On the 30th of March 1900, the ship was chartered by NDL's competitor, Hamburg America, and it was used until October of 1900. Since the arrival of the Deutschland Mint, Hamburg America didn't need the Kaiser Friedrich. 
Kaiser Friedrich actually operated quite comfortably for Hamburg America, and many thought that Hamburg America was going to buy it, and Sikau attempted to make an offer. Hamburg America admitted they were overall satisfied with the ship's operation under their flag, but its poor reputation from its engine complications meant they didn't want to keep the ship. Kaiser Friedrich's image also wasn't helped by the arrival of Deutschland, since Deutschland itself also had a series of propulsion system issues, and having two premier liners with troubled engines was a terrible look for the company. So in October of 1900, it was sent back to Sikau, and it would remain there for 12 years laid up. On the 1st of May, 1912, France purchased the ship for 4 million francs, and it would operate for them until it sank in World War I. But that is a story for another day. So, if you have learned something new in this video, why not leave a like and a comment down below, and have a wonderful day.